I'm Andrew McGill of the Master at Chorus. Our first question today is, how fast did Handel compose Messiah? Handel began Messiah in late August and was finished by September 12th, 22 days later. Although his diary does say that he took two more days to finish tidying up the score. To write a three-hour work, this seems to be very fast, although it was not unusual for Handel or indeed for other composers of his time period. Bach, in his job, was required to write and perform a cantata every week. And so to spend three weeks on purely composing and not having to stage a work was reasonable for a composer of Handel's uh, virtuosity. What does make the composition of Messiah such a spectacular feat is not the speed with which he did it, but the depth of artistry, the wealth of ideas, and the range of human emotion that he's able to pack into this piece with such memorable music and such moving depiction of what it means to be a human being. One of the reasons Handel was able to compose so quickly was that he frequently borrowed music that had been written before, sometimes from himself and sometimes from others. My students know this is plagiarism. There are five movements from Messiah that are based on pre-existent music. All of them are coloratura virtuoso showpieces for the chorus and were drawn from a series of Italian love duets that Handel had composed about a year earlier. In other works, Handel borrowed from his rival Bononcini, the uh, dreaded uh, impresario who had brought in the rival opera company to London. When he was accused of plagiarism, Handel replied that Bononcini hadn't used the material well in the first place and he'd been able to redeem it. The second question today is what were the first performances of Messiah like? One of the first things to know is that Messiah was never performed in a church during Handel's life. It was seen as a theater piece. It was performed in bars, inns, pubs, and theaters. The first performance took place in Dublin, Ireland in 1742. Uh, it was for charity. Here's a quote from the time. Messiah would be performed for the relief of prisoners in the several jails and for the support of Mercer's Hospital in Stephen Street and of the charitable infirmary on the Inns Quay. The performance raised about 400 pounds for these charities. And this began a long tradition of Messiah being associated with charities during Handel's lifetime. During the last decade of his life, Handel conducted over 30 performances of this work almost always as charity fundraisers, usually for the Foundling Hospital, one of his favorite charities. Handel led the first performance from the harpsichord. Typically in these early oratorios, the chorus was placed in front of the orchestra and a second conductor led the orchestra, in this case a first violinist. Although some controversy attended the first performance due to its use of sacred words in a secular environment, it became extremely popular. Uh, for later performances in Dublin, newspaper advertisements requested that ladies leave their hoop skirts at home and gentlemen not bring their swords in order to accommodate the numbers of people that wanted to hear this work. Handel led the premiere in London about 11 months later. It was performed during Lent, which was typical of performances of Messiah and indeed all oratorio during Handel's life. The association of Messiah with Christmas is a much later invention, a creation of our own modern times, although one that we enjoy greatly since it means that every year we get to return to Carnegie Hall. One of the things that may surprise you about early performances of Handel's Messiah is how small the number of performers were. The first choruses were probably about 16 to 20 singers, and this included five to six soloists who sang with the choir. The choirs were made up of some of the leading singers at the local churches, boys and adult men. The soloists tended to be from the opera houses, and they were either adult women or castrati singing the soprano and alto parts. Castrati were the leading operatic superstars of Handel's day. Young men with exceptional voices were surgically altered to maintain the height of their voices. Uh, they sang very loudly and very resonantly, but in a range that we think of as a woman's range. Many of the soprano and alto solos of Handel were sung by Castrati at some point, and virtually all of the leading roles in his operas. Although virtually all performances of Messiah today use four soloists, Handel rarely used so few, in most cases five or even six. Often he used two sopranos, sometimes an adult and a boy. Sometimes he used two basses or two altos. There's even a version of one of the arias that's a duet for two altos. Although the chorus size was quite small, the orchestra size is actually very similar to that which Masterwork uses today for our performances in Carnegie Hall. 12 to 15 violins, three or four violas, three or four celli, two double basses, with a few oboes, bassoons, trumpets, timpani, and organ. Next time, the question we'll answer has to do with the changing performing traditions of Handel's Messiah, how the number of performers grew rapidly during the 19th and early 20th centuries, and how they shrank again in the 1950s and 60s, 
back to more of what we think Handel would have expected in his own time.